Releasing Trauma is sponsored by the Global Association for Trauma Recovery. The Global Association for Trauma Recovery is a social impact organization serving as a resource for survivors and their families dedicated to facilitating change by spreading trauma-related awareness and thus creating a more trauma-informed world. Learn more at gaftr.org. Welcome to Releasing Trauma, a Survivor's Podcast. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. I am a survivor of emotional bullying, rape, sexual assault, domestic abuse, and grief. After losing my husband in 2019, I set off on a new adventure to help other women release their trauma and create a life they can cherish. Each week, I will feature a guest expert or a survivor to share their stories, tips, wisdom, and more. The goal is so that you can take away even just the smallest nugget of information you can use in your life right now to make a change and to remind you that you're not alone. There is life after trauma and you can move from victim to thriver and create a life you can cherish. Hi everybody, welcome back to the show. With me today is Melody Medeiros and we're gonna be talking about Uh, how our athletes and, you know, everything that's coming out with athletes around the mental health with Simone Biles and the Olympics and all of that, and how, um, you know, mental health plays such an important role in everything we do. So Melody, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. Well, we're thrilled to have you. This is a very important topic and it's not something you know, that we, we talk about because, you know, we want our athletes to be um, invincible, you know? Exactly. So it's a very important topic that we need to address. But before we get into that, you know, um, why don't you have us or I mean, tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, um, I am the assistant director for a community mental health center here in North Mississippi. Um, I started my career a little over 15 years ago um, and have specialized in treating trauma along with substance use disorders. Um, An overwhelming majority of my career has been spent treating um, active duty military as well as as student athletes and professional athletes. So, um, So trauma seems to be something that is pretty significant among all of those um, different parts or different uh, groups of individuals. So um, I came into counseling because of my own traumatic background and my own therapy. And so I feel like I'm able to connect with individuals when I do practice therapy um, at a very personal level, because I completely understand, you know, the things that they're saying um, that they aren't able to really put into words. I've been there and I felt that and I've figured out how to put things into words. So that's um, that's a little bit of who I am and how I got to the place I am today. Well. So let's talk about, you know, athletes and um, why is it that that we put so much pressure on them to be perfect? You know, I think that a lot of that has to do with our, um, with society's um, need for a hero. Um, I think that so many of us um, think that there needs to be a hero out there and we look at our own lives and we see things that we would like to have different things that maybe we could have done better in the past. And then society puts athletes up on this pedestal as though they have everything and they um they have the life everybody else wants to live. And so with that means that you don't get sick and you don't have mental health issues and you don't have money issues. You don't have any of the normal societal issues that come into play. Um, And I think that is a huge disservice to our athletes that are out there, both professional athletes and um, college athletes. Absolutely. Well, in high school too. I mean, they put a lot of pressure on high school athletes as well. That's Um, true. You know, it, it starts, honestly, you know, if you think about it, I think it starts at, for some at a very young age when they're playing, um, you know, just t-ball and, you know, baseball and all of that growing up, a lot of times parents put a lot of pressure on them, especially if they're good. Absolutely. And, you know, I've, I have done a lot of um, counseling with college athletes 
And what I have found is um, exactly what you said is that the family and the parents have put so much pressure on this child. And, you know, when they get into college, technically their brains are not fully developed. So they still have an adolescent brain, even though they're adults. Um, But their families have put all this pressure on them to help take the family out of poverty and to help make sure that the family's bills are paid. And so I have spoken to uh, many, many college athletes who feel the entire weight of the world is on their shoulders because if they don't make it into the professional leagues, then their families are going to look at them as though they're a failure because they didn't take them out of poverty like they've, you know, pushed them to do. And that's entirely too much pressure for someone. And it's not their responsibility. Absolutely not. Um, You know, and the other thing too, is a lot of parents live vicariously through their kids. Absolutely. Yes. I was one of those children. So, um, I completely understand that. So, you know, all this pressure, what does it do to our athletes? I mean, mentally. It creates a level of anxiety that um, is unimaginable. And so what we see a lot of times is our athletes get to a point where they cannot take any more anxiety at all. And I I like to explain anxiety, you know, by looking at the brain and just pretending like the brain is a glass of water and you, you know, you fill the glass of water up and you put a little ice in it. And then if you just keep putting ice in the glass of water, eventually the glass is going to overflow. And the ice is like the anxiety. You keep putting ice into the cup and the water is going to come out. And at some point, the individual's anxiety is going to overflow their ability to, um, to cope. And at that point, you have people, you know, leaving the sport, You have people that turn to substances as a way of um, of mitigating all of those symptoms. And when I say substances, I'm talking about both alcohol and illegal substances. Um, and then you have individuals that you see, um, you know, have to be hospitalized because of all the pressure that's put on them. They don't know a way out. They don't know how to say no because society and their parents and their coaches have said, you can't say no because no is bad. You can't, you know, back out of something you've already said you're going to do because that's bad. They don't know any other way. Um, When Simone Biles pulled out of the Olympics, I think that was one of the biggest um, contributions to the mental health stigma that anybody could have given in a long time. She finally said, enough is enough. My mental health is my health and I have to take care of me. And it's absolutely okay to say no to something. Yeah, you know, I think, I hope that what she did was kind of a tipping point and that, you know, the, um, the organizations that, that run the um, different athletes and stuff will start taking a look at their mental health and how all this pressure is, is actually harming them. Yes. And it harms their performances. I mean, when, absolutely you're already going to have anxiety when you perform, no matter what you're performing, whether it's sports or music or whatever. But so you've got that piece of ice already in there. And when you add other anxiety from all the way around, then your performance is going to, you know, completely be skewed. Absolutely. Um, You know, what did they call it? The, um, oh gosh, what did, what did they call what Simone had? I can't remember what the word was. The twisties. Um, oh, yes. You know, when you're just all in your head. And <clears throat> something I didn't even think about with gymnastics is that their routines and stuff, when they get on there and they perform their routines, that is pure muscle memory. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got allergies today. It's, um, <clears throat> they're not thinking about what they're going to do next. It's all pure relaying on, on muscle memory. And so if they get in their heads and they start thinking, that's when they screw up and they get hurt. Exactly. And she does things that no one else on the planet can even do. And so her chance of being hurt is is even higher than someone else. So I think that, you know, what she did, I agree with you. I hope it is the tipping point to start um, making society talk more and more about mental illness and getting treatment and being able to say no. I mean, you know, our children 
this goes into something completely different on another soapbox of mine, but our children are taught so often, don't say no. Right. Well, at what point can they start saying no? At what point do they learn that it's completely okay to say no, that is uncomfortable, and I don't want to do that? That's a huge point. And, you know, that's something that, I mean, as a parent, when my older daughters were younger, you know, I was of the, don't you tell me no, um, you know, until I, I started learning. And it, then I got to thinking about it. It was like, well, you know, they have every right to tell me no if, you know, they, they're not comfortable with something. It doesn't feel right to them. They don't want to do it um, to a point. Um, <laughs> you know, um, you know, but yeah, absolutely. When is it okay for them to say no? And, and when are we going to be okay as a society with people talking about their mental health? Amen. I, um, I still have, you know, and I've been in this field for a long time and I still find myself really concentrating and thinking before I talk about my own mental health issues because of the stigma surrounding it. Mm -hmm. And how crazy is that? You know, I mean, I, I treat people and I am out, you know, constantly within our community, you know, trying to destigmatize mental illness, but the stigma is so heavy. I think twice before I even talk about my own. Um, and we've got to get past that. We've got to be able to accept people where they are and have people that have become successful and that are out there advocating and out there on the front lines being able to say, hey, this is what goes on with me. And this is how I've overcome it. Agreed. Agreed. And I, that's why I try to be as transparent as I can, um, because, you know, somebody has got to take that, that risk and, and put themselves out there uh, like Simone did. And some of these other athletes that kind of followed her. Um, but yeah, we, we have to have those people out there saying it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay for, you know, you need to understand that you need to accept that. Yes, I agree. We have a, um, a radio ad that plays pretty routinely. And I, I go in and switch them up sometimes, but I haven't switched this one because one of the taglines in that is it's okay to not be okay. And I've had quite a few people that have come into our agency saying that they heard that ad and it just struck them in a certain way. They came in for help. And we've got to make that just the norm that it's okay to not be okay. And there's plenty of people out there that are qualified to talk about it. And just because you go to therapy, doesn't mean you go to therapy for the rest of your life, right. nor does it mean that you take medication. It just means you go to therapy, you learn some coping skills, you graduate from therapy, and you come back later on if you ever need them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you do have to take medication, I take medication for depression and anxiety. I'm not ashamed to admit that because I need that. And I know that if I don't take it, I can't perform and I can't help others who are counting on me. Absolutely. I'm in the same boat. I take um, my medicine religiously and um, everybody that knows me, even one of um, a lady that works with me, I've had some family crisis come up in the past month and she knew that I was back and forth between two different states. And she sent me a message. She said, are you taking your medicine? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes, sweet. I am. Thank you. <laughs> and that really meant a lot to me that she thought that far, you know, she knows I take medicine and she knows it's really important for my mental health to continue my medication routine. Um, and so she reached out to make sure I was taking my medicine. And that is how things need to be in society as a whole. We need to be so comfortable with saying, hey, this is what I take and this is why I take it, that our friends and our coworkers help you out. Like, hey, you know, I know life is pretty busy and chaotic right now, but don't forget you, you need to take this medicine in order to continue to cope. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and we have to... You know, we really have to get rid of this stigma around it's, you know, you're, you're broken if you're taking medicine or you're broken if you're going to therapy. Um, you know, for a while, therapy, going to therapy was a fad. Everybody, everybody had a therapist. And now all of a sudden it's back to being a stigma again. Yes. Um, you know, and, and we've got to, we've got to get society out of that mindset and into the mindset that you know, it's okay to take care of yourself. Yes, absolutely. And it takes people 
like Simone Biles coming out and and doing that. And I think it's going to take, unfortunately, a lot more people to continue to come out and not it just being this one time thing where we get to talk about it for a minute. But people coming out left and right saying, hey, this is what's going on with me. And this is how I've coped with it. And this is how I've learned to say no. And just really sharing their struggles. Um, You know, I think a lot about, um, you know, the loss of Robin Williams and, you know, I read things about him and I wonder if, um, you know, because right after his passing, people started talking a lot about suicide and they started talking a lot about um, mental health issues. And I hate that that um, momentum stopped because his death by suicide was so tragic, as it's tragic with anyone's death by suicide. Absolutely. Um, it was just so out in the open. It was so public. And he was somebody that everybody absolutely loved. Um, I hope that this um, influx of athletes coming forward and saying that I can't do this, or, you know, I know that Damian Lillard um, said, hey, the success and salary absolutely doesn't make him immune to depression. Um, And then you've got Brittany Griner with the U.S. basketball um, team that um, talked about how she really appreciated Biles and she felt connected because she too dealt with suicidal ideation and depression. I hope it doesn't stop with these people like it kind of did with Robin Williams. Um, It's going to take just consistency along the board to try and reduce this uh, stigma around mental health issues. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when the Me Too movement really hit, um, that went on for quite a while. And that really raised a lot of awareness around sexual assault and sexual abuse. Um, and, and it kind of created the momentum that is still going, although it's a little bit quieter now today than it was a few years ago. But hopefully this, like you were saying, you know, is just the start of a momentum of looking into mental health and, and making sure that, you know, our, our people are taken care of, whether it's our, our athletes, our military, um, personnel, or, you know, just our neighbor. Yes. Or the people that live in our own home. Um, Uh, yeah. You know, you sit in silence so often and you, you know, I talk to people and they're like, they have a great family. They have a lot of people in their home, but they're really alone because they don't feel like they can reach out and explain things. And I've, I've talked with parents before who don't understand mental health issues. And I have had to sit there and try to explain to them that you're creating an environment where your child is never going to feel safe talking to you because you shame them or you say, well, you shouldn't feel that way. And I always, how do you know that what they should or shouldn't feel? Um, Feeling is a very personal thing, and you can't tell me how I can and can't feel. Um, so we that has got to start. Uh, I wish parents had to go through parenting classes when the babies came so they could learn how to do this and not set up their children for failure because they aren't willing to understand mental health issues. Oh, I, I so agree. I am at the end of my child raising journey, and I wish that I knew at the start what I know now because I guarantee my my girls would have come out completely differently. I would have raised them in a whole (laughs) different way. Um, Not that they're, you know, there's anything wrong with them. They're all absolutely wonderful girls, but um, I I would have been a much different parent to them. Yeah. I joke with people and tell them, you know, my, my kids have been raised by a therapist and, um, but it absolutely didn't mean that they don't have their own set of issues. My daughter struggles with mental health issues. And Mm -hmm. um, I try to think that I am very open and honest about those things. But, you know, even parents that have that knowledge every once in a while, they get stuck because, you know, they don't know what to do and they get scared. And, um, and then it's like, what do I do now? Because I'm scared and I don't know what to do. And my kid feels this way. And, how do I make them stop feeling this way? So, um, so I agree. If, if everybody could just learn and learn together and admit when they may have made some bad decisions, then um, I think we would be in a better place. Parents aren't really willing. Well, in the South anyway, I know parents aren't really willing to do that. Um, <laughs> we're still in the, you know, spare the rod. Spool the child. Spool the child. <laughs> yes, we are. 
So, uh, so you know, there's that. But, um, but maybe one day, I think that it's come a long way from when I first started in this field. Um, and I think that, you know, if we continue to have people come out and talk about it, we can keep going further. Agree. I, I think that's the only way to do it is for, you know, people like you and me to, to do things like this podcast. And, um, you know, for those that the celebrities and, and whatnot, you know, that have a, a huge voice, um, it's very important for them to, to come out and, and feel safe to do so. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and I hope that the, um, the overwhelming love that I saw um, Simone Biles receive. Of course, there was some hate. There was the hate, of course. But the the amount of love, I hope she was able to filter out the hate and focus on all the positive that she did by just saying no that one time and realize how many children and teenagers she has, you know, that was probably one of those core memories that they'll remember forever that they, you know, said this person who is the best in the entire world said, no, I can't do that right now because my mental health needs to be taken care of. I hope that she realizes what a um, difference she's probably made in countless people across the world. I, I hope so. And I hope she does something with it um, because she does have a huge voice. Yes. You know, and we need people like her at the um, forefront. Absolutely. We really do. Yeah. Well, Melody, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on and talking with me today. This has been absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed myself and um, hopefully I'll get to talk with you real soon. Sounds great. Uh, Before I let you go, how can people find you? You can find us on um, the internet. Uh, It's www.communicaremS.org or you can find us also on Facebook. Um, You just search Communicare MS and we will be the uh, first one that pops up. Awesome. And listeners, you know, I'll have all her contact information in the show notes as always. Head over to releasingtraumapodcast.com if you're listening from one of our partner stations. Pull up Melody's show and all her contact information will be there. So Melody, again, thank you so much. And listeners, thank you as always for tuning in. We'll talk to you in the next show.